We live in a world, at least certainly in the West, which proclaims itself to be tolerant, accepting of, or at least indifferent to, whatever views or principles a person might subscribe to. I can think one thing, you can think the direct opposite, and we're fine with that, and we can live and let live. At least, in theory, that's how it's supposed to pan out. Tolerance, it seems, has become the buzzword in a society that thinks itself to be progressive and forward-thinking. However, as time passes, one might find oneself falling foul of this supposed tolerance, because what I think or say or the values I hold and by which I try to live my life can be at variance with the collective position of the supposedly tolerant majority, especially in these days if those opinions, ways of thinking and values are rooted in Christ, the Word of God, or the Church's teaching. Express some relatively basic and simple Christian principles in public, and you are liable to at least be strongly criticised and considered as some sort of relic from the Dark Ages, as Jesus experiences in today's Gospel passage, when nearly all of his many followers abandon him for the teaching that he is giving. He finds himself unfriended, deplatformed, socially shunned. Not that many years ago, To state that marriage is a union of one man and one woman was totally uncontroversial, taken for granted in just about every Christian country. Now that statement is considered in many quarters to be, to quote the followers of Jesus from the Gospel, intolerable language. How could anyone accept it? About ten or more years ago I was listening to a politician being interviewed on the radio. The interviewer was probing in his questions, and at one point he asked the politician how comfortable she was with being so antiquated and right-wing in her positions. She answered, as politicians often do, by herself asking a question. She asked the interviewer if any of her views or positions would have been considered controversial, conservative, old-fashioned, or right-wing 20 years before. The interviewer had to admit that 20 years before, all her views would have been very mainstream and in no way really controversial. To which this politician replied, You ask me about being so conservative and becoming right-wing, but in 20 years, I haven't changed my position one bit. The things she stood for then, she stood for now. It was society that had moved left of her position, and that made her position seem so far to the right. What she was articulating was that she was a Christian woman with Christian values informing her political positions. As society moved away from Christ, so it moved away from Christian principles and values, and more and more those Christian values were seen as less and less tolerable to the new post-Christian way of thinking. Now that interview was more than a decade ago, and I'm not going to give a lecture on politics. Most of you listening to me know a lot more than I do about politics. But over the past decade, Here in Ireland, we have seen a lot of things change for the better in our country. But we have to also recognise that modern Ireland has positioned itself in a number of areas into a stance that is not very compatible with the Gospel. And it has now begun to ridicule, belittle and declare as intolerable some things which we hold very dear as Catholic Christians. And in the coming years, there is no sign that this will change. Indeed, it looks more and more that what the Church has to teach, what the Word of God declares, 
will become more intolerable to the ears of many in this country and many indeed in the Western world. So what are we to do? The first reading of today's Mass puts before us Joshua, who is the leader of Israel. He warns the people, as Moses did before him, that they stand on the cusp of a great decision. They can choose to follow and serve the Lord, or they can abandon his ways and go after the false gods of the people around them. And Joshua declares, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I suppose that's the decision which each of us has to make in our own lives. We can see that the Christian roots of our nation are being torn out, and we can see that a significant number of our neighbours, friends and even family no longer look to Jesus nor to his church for guidance on how they should live their lives. We perhaps have tried in vain to convince them to return to Christ's path, but they find it intolerably old-fashioned and restrictive of the way they want to live their lives. We pray for them, we encourage what is good in their lives, and we accompany them as best we can and give them the best example we can. But ultimately, it is left to each of us to personally make our commitment to the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord. Now that won't make us popular to many. That might get us sidelined in wider society in the near future. It might mean we have to pay a high price for our fidelity to the Lord. We may well be tempted to just walk away from Christ. But we must be faithful. We must hold on to the faith, even though it is unpopular, so that there is at least a remnant left in this land to pass that faith on to a new generation of Irish men and women who will fall in love with Christ and his gospel again. Things have changed greatly in Ireland in the past 20 years. Not all that change has been bad. But not all that change has been good either. God, his ways, his laws, his gospel are unchanging. And I think that in the near future, we who have a strong commitment to our faith are going to have to feel the pinch or sting of someone saying to us about the faith and views we hold, this is intolerable language. Who can accept it? And maybe they'll follow it up by saying, please shut up. And so it is consoling to know that if they should say that to us, we will be in good company indeed. For Christ himself heard those words as he fell foul of his own followers because he stuck to his guns and refused to change his ways or his teaching to accommodate the ways that even his followers might have liked to have things. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord.